Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm with Wikibon.org, and we are here, live, at EMC World 2012. This is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of EMC World. We've been here all day Monday, we're here all day today, we'll be here all day Wednesday. This is theCUBE, where we bring you the smartest nodes on the planet, we extract information, we try to get the signal from the noise and bring it to you, our audience. If you got questions, uh, email, or, or email, forget email, I'll never see it. Tweet me, at DVellante. I'm here with at Stu, my colleague from, uh, from Wikibon, and um, go to siliconangle.com, go to siliconangle.tv, go to wikibon.org, check out the resources there, you got questions, hopefully we have answers. Uh, but we're here at EMC World, uh, big event, uh, live, 13,000 people here, and we're here with Hadam Nagib, who we had on uh, recently on, uh, on theCUBE in San Francisco at the vSpecs launch. Uh, he's with VMware, and, um, and uh, I'm sure you're excited to be here. I'm thrilled. Thank you so much for having me here, and I'm really enjoying EMC World. I'm actually blown away. I think these guys have done a fantastic job. Yeah, big day. This Huge number of people. Big day this morning, your, yeah. your CEO, Paul Moritz. Paul did a fantastic there. job. Pat did an incredible job yesterday with his, uh, with his keynote. Joe was uh, on fire, so it was really all around very, very uh, exciting to be here. You know, uh, I'm sensing a different philosophy, maybe it's philosophy is not the right word, but a, 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 there's a different feel for the show this year. Mm. Um, and I think actually, I made this observation with Chuck Hollis, is I think that EMC has taken a page out of VMware and VMworld. Now, it's not quite as ecosystem friendly, right? It's still very EMC heavy, but when you go to VMworld, it's all about the ecosystem. You know, you talk to guys like Todd Nielsen, for every dollar spent on VMware licenses, there's I think 17, that number keeps going up. It's 19 on the now. It's 19 now? Yes. <laughs> I want to know who does these numbers. I, I believe it though, because <laughs> the show is all about the ecosystem. Yes. And you're starting to see EMC really fill the void for partnerships in the IT business. You got, you got the Red Stack with Oracle, IBM Big Blue. I mean, they're you know, great companies, great brands, and obviously they have a big ecosystem, but there's a vacuum in terms of the, the partner-friendly nature of these systems. So, so we're seeing much more partnerships going on. The VSpecs announcement was a lot about those partnerships. I so agree. is that just my no, you know, I think incorrect you're sense or is very it very insightful? Yeah. I think you're picking up something that I actually pointed out yesterday to a couple of EMC guys as well. Yeah. I'm I'm sensing that it's more than just storage and more than just EMC. There's a broader ecosystem play that touches multiple facets. VSpecs is an outstanding example of it. They brought in five, six, seven different vendors put together the reference architecture. I've talked to maybe 10, 15 partners since then, and I've heard nothing but praise about the program and having access to this type of reference architecture and it accelerates the sales cycles. So EMC is kind of really leveraging itself in a much more effective way by looking at some of these third-party uh, resources and really helping accelerate the go-to-market. I mean, and you're, I mean it's, it's, just a, it's a strange dynamic, right? Because you're owned by EMC, but you're a software company. So, I mean, to you, you want to be friends with all the hardware guys, and you are. I mean, EM, uh, VMware has to be independent in, in that regard. Very much um, so. How do, you, how do you walk that fine line, though? Well, I think you, you really look at what makes, what, what customers are looking for, right, are, are really solutions to problems that not one vendor is going to be able to provide. And when you're able to really bring those solutions to bear by bringing a differentiated value from a hardware partner and a differentiated value from maybe another software partner and bring that together, that, that's what successful partnership really brings to bear. So what, what we focus our attentions on is, look, we've got a, a platform, we want to have the APIs as accessible as possible, we want to be as open and enabling as possible, but we feel strongly that when we do our best, our partners can do our best, and uh, their best, and that really drives the right levels of solutions. A great example, right? This announcement we made yesterday with the VNX storage analytics. VNX is a fantastic platform for storage. Customers are driving huge amounts of adoption with their mid-range storage story. We take something like VCOps, which Paul talked about this mm -hmm. morning, which has the heuristics ability to really take analytics across multiple VMs and really bring back data. Paul brought up the example of you know, 500 million data points coming back from, uh, from one customer. So bringing that with the mid-range storage platform so that VNX monitoring capability can be exposed through VCOps, that's the best of both worlds. That's where customers really be able to optimize their infrastructure leveraging VMware's technology. And so we look to those types of relationships, be it with Cisco, be it with other partners, those are enhancements that I think the customers really appreciate. Yeah, Dave, Dave, I wonder if I can pick up on that. So we, we were discussing the keynote yesterday, and it seems for the last three or four years, 
you know, Joe and Pat have been talking, you know, VMware, 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 uh, and it was a different message uh, yesterday. It was no longer about, you know, we, we know mission, virtualizing mission critical applications is important and they're making progress there, but with the mega launch announcement, you could actually see really deep integration and not just something qualified for VMware, but uh, some of the kind of IP underneath working with VMware. Uh, so as Adam was saying, uh, you know, VNX ha has the software that's kind of built with it. So we we've seen, I think, a, a bit of a progression as to uh, you know, the, the synergies between the engineering organizations there. That's, that's an that's, excellent that's a point. big change. We can all certify, but when we look to investing engineering resources so we can make differentiated value, I mean, that's a real test of whether this is really a partnership or we're just putting brands up on so the So let me just make sure I understand. So you're saying, Stu and Hadam, that you're talking about a, a deeper level of integration that creates value. Can we, can you add a little color to that? What specifically are we talking about here? So what we're talking about here is that VC Ops has the ability to capture data across physical and virtual, and you can establish collectors for certain types of hardware so that it can capture all the monitoring information that comes out. But as Paul talked about, uh, he says, look, we, can, we go into a customer with VC Ops, and when there's an outage two months ago or a month ago, we take all the data from the point of that outage and we can collect it and analyze it and give it back to a customer to say, look, now VC Ops will be able to do predictive work over the next three to six months so that you can avoid these types of outages in the future. Well, taking that collector, adding onto it what EMC knows about what could happen to a VNX, gives that true value add back to a customer so that VNX is enhanced looking through a VC Ops portal. We're creating something called the storage analytics solution with EMC so that they can be able to provide that for their ENX. Okay, and so that, that's added value above and beyond I see a storage piece in VCI. So, so you create a platform on top of which I can build predictive applications, is that right? On uh, top of which we can do predictive monitoring okay. through, through the VC Ops management. So predictive monitoring meaning Meaning what specifically? The application is already there? That predictive monitoring application exists? So what what? it means is that when I'm capturing tens of thousands of data points, sometimes the red alerts are not really, I need to stop everything and turn it all off. There's actually yeah, right, right, a right, sense right, right. that a red alert is an okay thing. And what, what VC Ops is actually really capable of doing is capturing all that data, analyzing it historically, and then being able to look and say, so these set of red alerts we can ignore, we'll put it as yellow, but these set of red alerts has historically created problems. Real red alerts. These yeah. VMs, yeah, okay. and you know, when you're looking at this volume of information, mm. that, that's how you have to be thinking about it. You mm. can't be looking at one app on one machine, and NIC drive has gone out, well, I, I, what am I going to do? Right, if, if Google has over a million servers, they don't have a guy running into a server room to pull out a NIC. They're trying to make it as automated and operational efficiency as possible. We're trying to come as close to it as possible. Yeah, so you're talking about a truly self-healing environment. Yeah, at some point, I'll Eventually you want to get to that, yeah. Fix that component, you know, but, but essentially getting to a, a state where that's really the only thing that a human has to do is maybe pull, pull, a, pull something and put it in, 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 and replace a, a component, we think, ideally. We think that's, that, that's the ideal goal to achieve. Well, I mean, and, you know, Google's sort of the gold standard of that, I right? I mean, they, they, you know, and, and it's a mix, right? I mean, there's an infrastructure component to it, there's an app component to it as well. You develop a certain type of app, Google's got a very unique app, but hopefully yeah. enterprises can take lessons learned from both of those. Well, that's a challenge for enterprises. There's a lot more complexity and diversity in the The legacy the apps need portfolio. to be maintained, so yeah. we're doing the best, I think, for them, given that they've got an infrastructure they have to maintain, a security profile that they have to maintain, but they can still get some of, it, some of the advantages. So VMware, obviously, early on, part of the VCE coalition. Yes. Um, V-Block, any flavor you want, as long as it's chocolate. Um, <laughs> Or I could have picked vanilla, or I could have picked strawberry. But but some really good chocolate. Yeah, right. <laughs> good and so, and chocolate. Yeah, right. And it comes in different sizes. <laughs> yeah, so, so maybe it is. Maybe the analogy is chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. So yeah, as long as it's that, but you can't get the pistachio. The Neapolitan of right. the uh, conversion. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so now we have V-Specs coming in. And so you guys obviously made a lot of inroads there. So V-Specs coming in. What yep. does that mean to you? Give us an update on, on what's happening sure. you know, there. I know you're not the V-Specs spokesperson. No, no, I, I'll from, be happy to. From so VMware's perspective. Look, it, it, for for, for VBlocks, we've had a tremendous amount of success because there is a certain customer set that says, I want chocolate, I don't want to make chocolate, I don't want to be in the business of developing this, I want you to bring me the best of breed, pre-build it, I'll buy a SKU, implement it, and they've had tremendous traction, hundreds of customers, and one of the statistics that I love to hear from them is you know, 40% repeat buy. 
So a person brings it in, uses it, and they're going to buy it another V block. That's a tremendous indication given how much of an investment that is. Right. But from a partner perspective, that offers a solution that can be expanded if I say, look, maybe I don't want to buy a SKU. Maybe I do want to do a little bit of customization. So maybe I want to have some type of, uh, of enhancements that I want to bring in a, a third party uh, technology from a switching perspective or a third party server technology that I want to bring in. The partners look to that level of flexibility. Or a it? different hypervisor. I, I mean, it's. I've <laughs> never heard that, but I'm sure that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it can be. Uh, there may it's be a technically possible. Somebody, God knows why you'd want to do that. So but. you want to make this theoretical, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> but in essence, that partner gets the advantage of that pre-built, tested, validated infrastructure, but then they can go to that customer and say, let me help you implement that, and they provide more value out of that. So from a distributor perspective and a reseller perspective, like I said before, I've heard nothing but positive praise as to how VSpecs is, is being used, and I think the traction it's going to get is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. It serves both both sets of customers. Yeah. So, 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 so Dave, obviously, I've been looking at this space really closely, and, and I heard a good analogy recently, which is a V-block is a system, and v, uh, v, uh, specs is a program. So, mm. systematically, we've said, you know, VCE is really yeah. the tip of the spear, and there might be a reason that somebody needs something a little bit different, or their uh, upgrade cycles don't quite fit into what they need, so there's plenty of reasons why that single SKU won't work, and what, what VSpecs does is give EMC and, and VMware and, and, and all the partners that they have that big catcher's mitt to catch things that don't fall it's into really the VCE bucket. And VCE can just focus on what they need to deliver, that, that Neapolitan uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, right. solution. So Hadam, I wonder if I could uh, switch gears a little bit and talk about the developer angle. Um, okay. VMware obviously is, uh, has a very clear developer strategy. I think Moritz has driven that, and uh, Todd Nielsen as well. Uh, very important component. Um, we all saw what Microsoft did in the 80s with its developer strategy, the leverage that Microsoft got out of that. And I think you know, VMware clearly is a modern day version of that. Um, the converged infrastructure space you know, brings uh, new opportunities for development, uh, particularly in the area of DevOps. And we've been hearing a lot about the intersection of application development and operations. And I'm wondering if you're actually seeing that occur in the customer base? I mean, within the Wikibon community, probably about 20% of the audience says, hey, we're doing DevOps, and we're getting hyper degrees of productivity, you know, cross-training, mm. application development and operations. Um, are you seeing that in the, in the VMware customer base? And is it, is it, is it an explicit part of the, the developer strategy that you're pursuing? You know, um, I am hearing there is more interest in this because I think what we've been trying to do is, I think you rightfully say, we, we focused on a developer community and we're looking at how we can take the development community and really make the infrastructure somewhat invisible to what a developer has to look at. In the old days when we built applications, we actually had to consider that it was going to lie on this type of infrastructure. We had to write to device drivers. We had to really think about what that underlying infrastructure has been. We've taken, I think, a step with Cloud Foundry and some of the work we're doing with Spring to really enhance and map to a new development community mm. that really doesn't know where that application is going to sit, doesn't really want to be considering that as part of the implementation, but I think we've been looking at also the other side of it, which says an app, uh, an app director type of solution that we, we, we're bringing to the customer base today can really take the profiles of how those applications have been built and really map those templates back out to an infrastructure so that you can have a bill of materials, almost a, um, a translation that occurs between the developer creating that application mm. and the IT person responsible for promoting that out into production. Right. It's a first step. I wouldn't say that it's the DevOps uh, you know, ideal just yet, but without a doubt, I, I can really see that combined with some of the software-defined data centers concepts that we're thinking about where we can really bring network storage, compute artifacts up to a development community so I can map to a virtual data center and think about all the security profiles that I need to put with that. That, that I think, is the beginning of where, where we'd ideally like to get to. Yeah, and I think that you know, a lot of customers I talk to are just getting to agile programming, but I think that many of them have an opportunity to basically integrate the agile with the DevOps, and I think the converged infrastructure piece is a, is a fundamental part of that strategy that really simplifies the ops piece of the DevOps, so maybe it's ops dev. You know, we took compute and we've been able to take, say, the provisioning of a server from 10, 15 minutes now, which is what, what somebody can do from four or five weeks 
what it used to take before. And I think right. what we're looking at is in the future, apps should be able to be developed much faster with an agile um, um, type of uh, methodology, but also provisioned and updated and managed in a much more efficient way. There are surprising hindrances in the data center today, yeah, yeah. especially around things like firewalls and load balancers and networks and security, that I think if we're all working together to kind of map that with an ecosystem, we can make some significant headway in Great. that. Excellent. Hadam Nagib, thanks very much for Thank coming on theCUBE. It was great to Appreciate see you again. Uh, hopefully we'll see you at uh, VMworld. Yeah, uh, this absolutely. Year. We'll be out there, I'm sure. to sit with you and, and uh, enjoy more time. Let's do that. Thank you, Stuart. Really appreciate the time. Okay, everybody, we'll keep it right there. We'll be right back. Uh, we got uh, uh, Bill Cook coming on, who's the, the CEO of Greenplum, president of uh, the Greenplum division. Uh, keep it right there, we'll be right back. <laughs>